Last June, the 18 proud Mario Maker enemy nations came together and held a huge tournament. The Mushroom Kingdom Championship. It was an epic tournament, legends were born that day, the chain jumps won by an incredibly small margin, the press praised the event and everyone seemed to like it. And so they decided to do it again. Each one of the 18 proud enemy obstacle nations will show you one idea today, but only 5 of them will make it to the finals. At the end of this video you will have to decide which 5 enemies will make it to the finals and have a chance to win the Mushroom Champion title of 2017. So are you ready? Let's do this! The show starts with the performance of the bloopers. They prepared a dodge the blooper idea for Mario. Here our plumber has to dodge the bloopers which fall from the ceiling. The bloopers drop from tracks and it definitely took them a long time to place all the bloopers right so that they fall in exactly this pattern. But is this enough to reach a place in the top 5? The boos are next. They prepared an expert wall jump challenge in order to win your vote. There are boos which carry a bullet blaster stacked on top of a Goomba. This allows them to create a really tough challenge for Mario. Our plumber has to perform precise wall jumps while not touching the ouching spikes and avoiding the burning fire bars. Wow, this idea looks pretty dangerous. I can imagine that it took the boos at least 15 minutes of practice until they finally were able to record this idea with Mario surviving. Next up are the chain jumps. Last year they made it into the finals without showcasing an idea. All they did was to swing madly around and the audience at home fell in love with them. It looks like they prepared something similar for this year's competition. Here tons of wink chain jumps get stacked on tracks, which makes them swing around like crazy. If Mario wants to survive this idea, he needs to spin jump on top of them until this bullet blaster starts to shoot bob arms, which after a while detonate and create a hole in the chain jumps dance act, which makes it possible for Mario to escape. So who's next? Oh, the bob arms. Last year they made the last place and there was a fierce discussion between the Bob Arms if they should even send an idea this year. Luckily they decided to do so and this is what they came up with. They created a small minigame challenge. Mario has to bounce a muncher on top of his head. On top of the muncher's head lives a Bob Arm. There is no threat to Mario's health here, but after a while a timer expires and he is able to go through the door. Sadly, he can't proceed from there on as the exit door is blocked because Mario ignited the Bob Arms before. I see. Mario needs to bounce the bob -omp in such a way that he doesn't explode before the timer expires. If Mario manages to save the bob -omp's life, the exit door isn't blocked and he's able to proceed. Here are the dry bones. They make use of the fact that dead Koopas can't die if Mario jumps on top of them. They cycle up and down and make it really hard for Mario to survive here. To make matters worse for a plumber, there are bullet blasters which would put Bobo fireballs into the arena, which kill him if he touches them. There is a wiggler trigger hidden out of sight and Mario needs to survive on top of the dead Koopas until it expires. Once expired, he is able to escape through these pipes. The Spinies prepared a small platforming challenge for Mario. They teamed up with a couple of saw blades and winged buzzy beetles to create small and dangerous platforms, which cycle up and down. Hmm. I think this idea is really cute, but I feel like it lacks something that makes it really stand out. Anyway, let's find out what the Magic Hoopers prepared for us. They created a small boss fight. Here Mario has to hit this Magic Hooper who has a Goomba stacked on top of it. But um... Didn't the Magic Hoopers show us the exact same idea last week in their tips, tricks and ideas video? Oh, but wait, there are suddenly three Magic Hoopers in the arena. Oh, I see, they took the idea from last week and tweaked it a little bit, so that there are now three Magic Hoopers as soon as Mario hit the first one once. That's interesting. This works because there are two Magic Hoopers which drop into a hole as soon as Mario is close enough to them, which he is as soon as he hits the first Magical Koopa. The Koopas prepared a small minigame reward room. The pipe at the bottom spawns red Koopas and Mario is able to hit them there. Once the Koopas are in defense mode, they are transported to the top of this room and start to collect the coins up there. Mario now has to bounce the Koopa in such a way that he hits the four red coins, which grants Mario a key and allows him to leave this idea. It's an interesting choice by the Koopa faction to compete with a completely non-lethal idea. I'm looking forward to find out how the audience at home likes this. 
The munchers created a small muncher train for Mario. Here our jump and runner has to jump and run on top of this moving muncher wall. This would be really easy for Mario if it wasn't for the party crashing saw blades which threatened to kill him. And next up are the hammer bros. Before Mario is allowed to show an idea featuring hammer bros certain security measures have to be taken. Okay, looks like Mario is safe under his helmet. This hammer bro throws hammers towards Mario, which Yoshi can eat and then kill the hammer bro to get a key. Hooray! And now it's time for the Jeep Chiefs. Mario needs to dodge this huge and dangerous burning fish. At the top is an interesting timer contraption. A pipe spawns flying bob arms which detonate close to the ice blocks on tracks. The ice blocks then disappear and stop to block the pipe at the top from spawning shells. Once there is a shell, Mario is able to hit the spring in the middle which leads to a small chain reaction and kills this dangerous Jeep Jeep boss in a pretty cinematic way. Next up are the Goombas. They created a small idea where Mario has to work together with the Goomba so that both of them are able to survive. This brave Goomba carries a small platform on its back and mindlessly walks to the right. After a while he becomes blocked by a conveyor belt and isn't able to walk any further. Now it's Mario's task to help him. Once our plumber hit the P-switch the journey of our dream team continues. Thanks to Mario the Goomba was able to reach his final destination and thanks to the Goomba Mario is able to hit the goal X. That's a really cute team idea. But is it only me or does this idea make heavy use of boosts and munchers as well? It's weird that the Goombas decided to showcase other competitors during their idea. Now it's time for the forms. They won the semi-finals last year and the bookmakers are quite sure that they will be in the finals this year as well. They decided to compete with a donut block platform idea. If forms are placed on top of donut blocks, the donut blocks start to drop down. They use this here to create different platforming challenges for Mario. That's a really cool idea, but I'm not sure if this is enough to win the semi-finals two years in a row. Only 5 more ideas until it's finally time for you to vote. The Wigglers are next. They show us an idea where Mario has to bounce on top of a Wiggler on tracks. Um... Yeah, that's it. Weird. Last year the Wigglers had such a great and interesting idea. And this year it's just Mario bouncing on top of one of them on tracks. I don't understand why they didn't go for something, you know... A little bit more unique. They were so close to reach the finals last year, but this is definitely not going to be enough this year. Next up are... What? Oh! I just heard that wasn't the end of the Wiggler show. They put their performance under the theme level design and they want to show us different ways how this idea can be played. Okay, that sounds cool. Currently we can see that the whole Wiggler auto-scrolling bounce part is optional. If Mario is in a hurry, he is able to beat the stage without touching the Wiggler once. That's not only really neat for speedrunners, but it also helps people who are too slow for the Wiggler platform. If a player loses his Wiggler taxi, he isn't forced to kill himself as there is a way through the level without the Wiggler. And now they show us all the hidden things which are placed into the stage for Marios who look for an additional challenge or for Marios who really like to explore levels. There is even a hidden block that allows to skip the last challenge of the idea. Now that I think about it, it's really cool that the Wigglers thought about all these different playstyles that different Marios might have as most Marios probably won't even notice that there is more to the stage than the way they played it. Next up are the Spinies. They ended last year's competition as second to last. Last year they showcased a small idea where Mario had to dodge the spikes which they shoot and it looks like they go for something similar this year. Mario has to make his way through this airship but there are not only saw blades which try to hurt our plumber but the spikes which the Spinies at the bottom shoot as well. Ah. I'm not sure about this. It's pretty close to the idea they had last year and this year's competition seems to be really tough. The piranha plants trap Mario in a room until a timer expires. They use the old track stacking trick in order to create a horrific burning piranha plant snake which spits fire in endless waves. Mario has to dodge the dangerous fire stream until the timer to the left runs out. That's a really dangerous idea and it clearly has potential. The Buzzy Beetles decided to use a timer for their idea as well. But the timer they use is pretty special. It's an invisible timer that is able to time a certain amount of time really accurately. It's really easy to set up and it's a timer which I haven't showcased on this channel before. The crazy built-in timer clock. 
Yes, this idea features the timer that is already set up in every Mario Maker stage as soon as you start to edit it. Anyway, Mario has to guide this buzzy beetle to the left before the timer expires. His only chance to get the buzzy beetle there is by strategically hitting his head against these brick blocks so that the buzzy beetle jumps over the obstacles. And now it's time for the last idea. The Monty Moles prepared a small chase scene. At the top there is a Monty Mole who constantly throws threats into Mario's path. Mario needs to dodge these threats, but he also needs the little mole as he's the only one capable of destroying the Bob Arm Towers which block Mario's path. After a while, Mario becomes imprisoned in this little room. Now he has to hit the shell med launcher to his right three times so that a key appears and he's able to escape. That's a cute idea, but what I don't understand is why the Monty Mole ran away. I mean, yes, if he stays up there, the shell might kill him, but I don't think the audience wants to vote for someone who is afraid of getting hit by a shell. And now ladies and gentlemen, it's time to vote. The tournament organizers decided to change the voting procedure slightly, as the previous voting system ended with me counting votes for over 5 hours. So here's how it works. There are 18 starters, but only 5 of them can enter the finals. Every one of you has the chance to vote for your favorite 5 starters. Just put the name of your favorites into a comment starting with an exclamation mark. The voting will be up for a couple of days and then I'll use the search function to find out which 5 Five starters will compete against each other in the grand finals. Just be careful that you don't misspell the name of your five favorites. The correct voting names are currently on screen and they are in the description and they are in the comment section as well. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you enjoyed it, leave me a thumbs up and maybe you feel especially championship today and want to hit the subscribe button as well. The finals will take place in two weeks and there will be non-championship related videos before. I hope you have a wonderful day and to see you soon. Goodbye!